All right, we're at the point where we can start writing data to our database through our worker function, and we can start templating out our HTML page to display some of that data. So let's do that now. Uh, we're gonna be typing in some rather obscure looking code in like a SQL format. So don't sweat it if you don't understand it too much. Fortunately, it's pretty straightforward, and if you basically copy it and maybe modify it to your needs, it should work just fine. We're gonna start by opening the database. And this code's basically stolen straight from the PsychoPG site, from the documentation. So we need to try, and we're gonna to try to establish a connection. So that's gonna be uh, connection psychopg2.connect. This is to connect to the database. We need to pass in a DB name. And it's gonna be weather. And that's the database that we created here. Uh, weather and we need to pass in our user that's Postgres we need to pass in a host that's localhost and a password and that's going to be your password and that's your password for here for PG admin your Postgres password that's what you'll put in. I, of course, am not gonna show you my password, so I'm gonna just use a variable that I defined earlier that contains my password so that you don't see it. And if it works, we're gonna print out uh, open DB successfully. You put some kind of printout to show that you were able to actually establish the connection. So we're trying to figure out if there's a problem where it goes wrong. So this is helping us out. Then we're gonna do an accept now we're going to do print datetime.now unable to connect to the database. So this is one way to log out to the screen. Like if our database is un unavailable at some point in the middle of the night, we can come back and check the printouts and see what happened. But we can also log that. So we're going to do logging.exception. We're going to do unable to to connect or to open open the database and that's this again could have a date time in there whatever you want so you have a log that's going to be generated and you have a printout that's going to be generated so you'll be able to see if there's an exception and then we're going to just hit uh, return to break out of this if it fails otherwise we're going to create a cursor that's con.cursor. This is <laughs> kind of funny, but it's cursor factory equals psychopg2.extras.dict cursor. So we're creating a connection and we're creating a cursor to kind of navigate through the database. And again, this is more or less taken from the internet. You can find this anywhere, it's in the docs if you look. And then we're gonna write data to database. And that'll look probably the most confusing, but it's cursor.execute. And we're gonna put triple parentheses. There's like a SQL command going inside here. And it's gonna be insert into, and then it's gonna be the table that we defined earlier, which is station reading. Okay, so you're gonna insert into the station reading table. All right, insert into the station reading. And then we're gonna put in all of the columns that we created from our model. So all of these will go in to here because those are the columns in our database. So that's gonna be location, weather, wind, string, temp, humidity, precip, icon, URL, and observation time as well. And then we'll just kick down to a new line and we're gonna insert the values. And these will be the values that get inserted into here. And the way this is done is you just put percent %s for each column. So there's eight columns. We need eight of these. That's three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. And then outside of all of that, we're going to put another set up of parentheses and we're going to type in our variables that are going to go in there. So we have location, weather, wind string, temp, humidity, precip, and what else do we have? Precip. We have icon, URL, and we have observation time. So again, insert into this particular um, table in these columns this data that's subbed into here for values. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, it doesn't matter. That's just how it works. So we're going to do what's called a commit to the connection, which will actually persist or write our data to the database. We'll do a cursor.close and we'll do a connection.close and that'll wrap up everything, shut everything down after it's written to the database. And then it would be nice if all this is successful to print something to tell us that. So we'll put data written and we'll do datetime.now. So we'll get a timestamp and a confirmation Okay, let's give this a shot. I run this. Oh, let's see what we did wrong here. Must have a typo. Values. Okay, that should be plural. Sorry. Try it again. Oh, okay. As you see, it was written successfully. So let's run this. like a bunch of times here. All right, so we've written the data over and over again, and now we can go back to our database, right click on the table that we're writing to, hit view data, and we'll view the top 100 rows. There's not that many, but here you go. So we have eight readings, and you can see they're not, they're not updated that often from uh, not every second, but probably every couple of minutes. These are a couple I did earlier. And here's the ones that we just did. So everything looks really good. This is all the data that we need to start creating a uh, awesome web app from. So hooray, hooray, that's good. That's uh, congratulations, we've done that. So now we need to go into our index.html and this is something that's a Django specific process. Now I'm gonna do a basic template for you first just to show you that it works. And then I'm gonna go in and we're gonna add some more advanced templates and then deploy this to Heroku, okay? So just to show you that this page is actually working from all the configuration that we did earlier, you can run this server and launch it. And this is the index page that we created in a couple videos ago. So let's go in and modify this to say uh, let's make this a header and we'll make it say weather station app or how about just weather station and we're going to create let's do an unordered list and then we're going to create a list of stuff here if you're not familiar with html i'm sorry you're going to have to look a little bit of this up uh, to figure out how to code this stuff but this is basic HTML here, and we're going to do, oh, this should be H1. There we go. So our list, what are we going to do? We're going to go in, and we're going to start listing out the items. So we're going to do, uh, let's see, location. So we'll put location. And we're going to use something in particular to Django, which is double brackets. And this tells it that I'm fetching a variable from data, which was passed over to our index from our views.py. So remember, we called that data. So we're going to do data dot location, okay, because that's the variable name. All right, so let's go back to our page here and refresh 
and boom there you go that looks really good so let's copy a couple of these I guess eight to be exact right two and modify these for each one of these so we have weather wind string weather wind string we have temp humidity uh, what else we have precip and we have uh, icon URL we'll deal with that later and uh, observation time So let's actually refresh that and see what that looks like. Okay. So I'm going to drag this off and modify this here to say currently when and I'm going to put an F after this to show it's Fahrenheit. Oops. An F after the temperature to show it's in Fahrenheit. I put temp, humidity, let's put icon here. We'll go back and make that a image here in a few minutes. Uh, later on actually we're going to build out a better template but just to show you how this works so this will be uh, we don't need anything here okay so let's ooh looks pretty good um, yeah actually let's try to do this let's just do and Let's break this out of here. It's going to look terrible, but I don't know if this will work. If not, we'll come back to it uh, later on. I have no idea. Oh, yeah, there you go. Okay, so we can even do that. So that's pretty cool. So awesome. So that's really everything that you need to know to develop a locally uh, hosted app from Python, from the worker app to Django, all the way up to a fully functional web app. Now it looks pretty plain, but hey, it does work just fine, you know, and if we go in and we run this worker function again, wrong one if we go in and run the worker and that was updated 1712 oh, there you go so we can get the uh, the new data there you go so 212 p.m. Pacific it's updating just fine so all we have to do now is get this deployed to Heroku get our worker script scheduled to run more often you know like every 10 minutes or something to be automated and then we have to come up with a less ugly template so we're going to handle hopefully all of that in the next video or two and you will look like a total rock star if you have any questions let me know thanks for